Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mel. I grew up playing outside. And I grew up doing something meaningful, watching movies and TV. I never had cable, and we finally bought a VCR about the same time DVD players hit the market. Throughout our marriage, Mel has sadly missed many of my pop culture references and movie quotes. So it's time to catch up on all the films I missed. Good evening. Hello, Nick. Hello, Melissa. And how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am sufficiently adequate. You know what could make me better? Uh, Watching a movie. Or even more adequate. (laughs) (laughs) Let's aim for more adequate. Let's aim for more adequate. That should be our motto every day. Okay. (laughs) I'm feeling great. Uh, Well, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling moderately sufficiently adequate, probably because I'm thinking about the movie we're going to watch tonight. Is this a clue? Maybe. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I don't want to be, you know, looking at your thoughts and making them be a certain way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't control my thoughts. Yeah. I don't want to police them at all. Oh, um, (laughs) okay. I'm just trying hard to get sting police songs out of my head now, even though that's, (laughs) that's totally a tangent. (laughs) Wait, we already saw. What did we see? Total recall. What is, what is it? Okay. Didn't we? Yeah. What is it? Why? I don't why know. Would that been, I don't know. Guys? For some reason, your clues made that pop into my okay, head. Okay, that's fair. Um, All right. Policing my thoughts. Yeah. Golly gee, I have no idea where where you're trying to All right. steer my thoughts. Have you ever? So obviously, you don't know what we're watching tonight. I don't know. Yes. No. Okay. Have you ever heard of a movie called Police Academy? I have heard of a movie called Police Academy. Have you seen it before? No. I had a friend who was obsessed so with the, so- the song and they uh, learned. What? Wait. What no. song are you talking about? No, that's something else. Never mind. Nope. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know anything about Police Academy, obviously. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about this song. Wait. What? What's the Eddie Murphy movie? Where 48 hours we just saw it like where they put the bananas in the tailpipe. That's you don't remember what it is. Well, <laughs> it's not. I'm my recall is not happening. Your total recall, <laughs> I don't have total recall on this <laughs> title. That's Beverly Hills Cop. Okay, it is not police it is cop. Not. Can you see oh, how I'm confused? I, 100%. And we just saw 48 hours not too long ago, which he's not a policeman, but he's with the policeman like the whole movie. So, yeah. So you've never heard of Police Academy? <laughs> I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Oh, you have. Okay. It has like the guy who does all the sound effects in it, I think. The guy who does what kind of sound effects? What like with his mouth. Like he can just do sound effects. Do sound effects? Yeah. Do you know an example? Can you do any of the sound effects? No, I just, I don't, that's all I know. That okay. I think there's a guy like that in okay. this movie. Okay. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm just curious. Can I you... want to say that Eddie Murphy is in this movie. Okay. Eddie Murphy's in this movie, all right. But maybe he's not. <laughs> he was in everything in the 80s, apparently. <laughs> do you know any, any of the other characters besides... Do you think Eddie Murphy's the one who does all the sound effects? No, or? no, it's a guy who like... It's another guy. Okay. It's his shtick. It's his shtick, okay. <laughs> and then there's that other guy. What guy? He has like a... He has a what? He has a name like Cougar. Like Cougar? <laughs> yeah, he... <laughs> Okay. He talks really funny. He talks funny. Okay. Oh my gosh. I just, I'm blabbering. Um, oh, what is it? He's like, I need <laughs> do more, you know what I need more details. He's, he, he has a name like Cougar and he talks real funny. Oh my goodness. I know who you're talking right? about. I know who you're explaining. <laughs> he got it. He, he talks yeah, really he, high he and crazy. He like has this, this voice that kind of just goes off the rails. Yeah. I think. Are you talking about Bobcat Goldwich? Yes. <laughs> Bobcat Cougar, is that what you got? Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Yes, okay. Okay. Is he in this movie? (laughs) I really want there to be a guy named Cougar. I can't believe I got that out of that. I know. Cougar is a guy who talks crazy. That's what happens when you've been married this long. Yeah, this long. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, Okay, so. So Bobcat Bobcat. Goldwich, Eddie Murphy, and a guy who makes sound effects. That's That's my guess. That's your guess? Okay. Yeah. No other. I mean, you. I feel like we're doing archaeology. We're surfacing things here. Is there anything else you'd like to surface or you got? Do we need to blow more I dust? I keep picturing a friend from high school who I think loved this movie. Oh, okay. 
That's all. Okay. Yeah. Any any knowledge about the plot? Oh, no. <laughs> Not, none whatsoever. Okay. So what are you excited about and what are you dreading for this movie? Um, I'm excited to see... I think this was a popular popular movie. I think it was okay. loved by people. So I'm excited to see what that was all about, why okay. people enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I'm excited to see who's actually in it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a comedy, and I'm totally in the mood for a comedy tonight, right. so that's great. I'm dreading, oh, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe it won't be as great. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what I'm dreading. Like, it won't live up to the hype. Yeah. 80s, too 80s cheesy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems like if it's a comedy, mm-hmm. comedies, there, there's a fine line. Comedies are hard. They are really hard. To do a really good comedy is hard. Yeah. It's way harder than like drama. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. Do you, <laughs> I just really want you to come up with another random character. I was kind <laughs> of fun guessing that person too. You got any other weird names you're going to throw out there for me? <laughs> um... No, no. But okay. I think like this person that I'm imagining that does all the sound effects. Yes, yes. Which I know I brought up in our preamble for Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> I'm 100 percent sure yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, I feel like he did like a Cosby Show oh. guest appearance. Okay. Which is probably how I know of him. The sound effects and yeah. such. Okay. Yep. That is entirely plausible. Mm-hmm. Potentially. Yeah. Everybody was on the Cosby Show in the 80s. <gasps> Lucky 80s. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay, I, I'm going to need a movie poster and a tagline. You know how it goes. <laughs> um, tagline is something like, um, <laughs> they were supposed to get trained, but they broke the system. Okay, that's a good tagline. Thank you. You didn't um, even guess what the plot line of the movie is either. Yeah, no, I'm still clueless on okay, that. Okay, okay. Um, and I feel like the, the movie poster is mm-hmm. something like, Looking at like um, an obstacle course, okay, like long range, like a series of things that you have to like go through, climb yeah. over, yeah. jump over, whatever. Is it empty or are there people in it? No, there's what? no people. It's empty. Oh, okay. That has no meaning. It's just showing you the course. That's all. Gotcha. Wow, that's intriguing. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. You ready to go check it out? <laughs> I'm so ready. Let's go. Let's go see Cougar. <laughs> Let's go see Cougar Murphy. <laughs> all right. The city was full of it. Hey! Three TVs! Desperate measures were needed. I want you to go to the police academy. The police academy is such a dangerous place. Honey, don't worry. Desperate measures were taken. I'm joining the police force! The mayor says we have to take this riffraff. I'm trapped here? Oh, yes. We all are. What about guns? When do we get guns? You will be schooled. In firearms, police procedures, local laws, and many, many other things. High speed driving. And self defense. I need a volunteer. That's me! I love it. I love it. Police Academy. Where did you get this gun? Mom gave it to me. Mister, I am warning you, high power! They're lean. <laughs> mean. Does the radio bother you? I can turn it down. Obscene. Each and every one of them striving to defend. You make me sick. Thank you, sir. I make everybody sick. See the thighs. Or upend. Come on, come on, I haven't got all day the thighs. And now that they're ready for the real world. Give me the thing! Crime is no longer the number one problem. They are. Can you get my kitty cat out of the tree? No problem, ma'am. Police Academy. Well, I wish I did a better impersonation of Sirens because I would have used that to transition into the post conversation, but I don't. So, 
Arr, arr. Sorry, I'm I'm really not as good as he is. It must must be fun to be able to do all those like sound effects. Though. Yes, uh, Michael Winslow, like the things he can do with his vocal cords and his mouth are amazing. Yeah. Like the noises he can make are fantastic. So that was Police Academy. That was Police Academy. Do you feel like you went to school? Uh, no. <laughs> It was nothing like my school. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Not even like a band camp or anything. <laughs> no, not even like band camp. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> what did you uh, What did you think of that one? You want to give us a quick summary? Sure. Um, it's the weirdest, craziest, most unrealistic premise in the, <laughs> in the beginning. All right. Um, that's a lot of superlatives. But that was a lot. Yeah. Okay, so, like, they open up the police academy to anyone who wants to join. Right. And so, like, a whole bunch of, like, ragtag people um, who maybe wouldn't fit your normal police stereotype or what you're thinking a police officer would look like or mm-hmm. or be like. A whole bunch of these people join up for various reasons. They all have their own reasons for coming to the police academy. Mm-hmm. The main character is forced into it because he's gotten in trouble one too many times and his dad was friends with the one of the police guys who was like okay yeah. i'll either put you in jail this time or you can go through the academy so steve gutenberg reluctantly joins the academy thinking he's going to just get kicked out in a couple of days or hours actually yeah he was really trying yeah really trying hard yep yeah. so anyway but he can't get kicked out because mm-hmm. the the police officer that put him in there put a clause in about this mm-hmm. so he's stuck And it's just a whole, like, there's all sorts of, all the different characters um, are working through their own stuff and doing the training, you know? Yeah. And there's one officer who's training them who's actually trying to get them, he's trying to weed all of them out and get them, like, (sighs) kicked off. Yeah. You're talking about Lieutenant Harris, right? Yeah, the one who... He's the one who's, move it, move it, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's Lieutenant Harris. Everybody hates him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's yeah. trying to like get people kicked out mm-hmm. and like just get rid of all of them. Yeah, because they want the cookie cutter cops. Him and right. it's conspiracy between him and like the police chief the police chief, I think. And the commandant. Yeah. The yes. commandant kind of agrees to it, but he doesn't really enforce it. I, I mean he <laughs> He doesn't seem to know what's going on half the time. So. Yeah. He's a, what was he described as? He described his character as dreamy. Yes. I could listen to that man talk about anything, really. <laughs> I want to just hear him talk about, like, what the grocery list is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great accent. Yeah, he does. I love the way he talks. So anyway, at the end of it, there's this riot that breaks out um, because of the klutz on the team. Yes. Um, and they all have to go into the serious situation Mm -hmm. and deal with it. And they do, and they kind of come out on top basically, and they graduate from the Academy Yeah. and even Steve Gutenberg, he makes it through and he He does, I don't know that he finds his meaning or purpose, but he, he definitely finds a girl. (laughs) (laughs) He does find a girl. That's true. That's a great point. Uh, there's a certain point in the movie where he could try to get out of it, but then he doesn't. But the reason he doesn't is because he sees the girl. Yeah. So then you're like, is he staying for the girl? Is he staying for, you know, the structure and the people and feeling a sense of purpose or whatever? Yeah, they never really dig into that. If only they would make another one so they could explore that. <laughs> or maybe six more. <laughs> I can't believe they made six more of these. I was I was fully planning in my mind before you found out that there were seven of them. Of teasing this out to be like, a, how many more could there be? Mm-hmm. And just keep showing you them one after the other <laughs> over and over just to drive you slowly crazy. But now you know. Have you seen all of them? I want to say, yeah, I think I have. Wow. I think I've seen all of them. Do you like Do you like the Police Academy movies? I mean, I was a kid. And this is another one that's TBS version. I've never seen the full version, which... With the podium? With the podium, <laughs> I don't remember the podium scene. And then there's, you know, it's it's the, it's an 80s art comedy. So there's always a shower scene in an 80s art comedy. Like, I would be hard-pressed to find an 80s art comedy that did not have some kind of shower scene in it. I think you'd be hard-pressed. So all that notwithstanding, I don't remember those as a kid. Although maybe, maybe the podium scene, I just had no context to know what was going on. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. you wouldn't know. If yeah, no, no, yeah. no. So, but yes, I, I just remember them being, I mean, the characters are very outlandish. Mm-hmm. Like I was especially drawn to uh, Tackleberry, who was like the crazy intense military guy. You were drawn to him? Oh man, he, he's just hilarious. And in the later ones, he's even funnier. It's even more extreme. It's like, wow. it just keeps getting amped up. Like this one's like, it, I feel like Police Academy from my childhood memory is like the opposite of what you normally think about movie series. Usually in a movie series, you're like, the first one is the best. You're establishing the characters Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're it's an original story. You have no idea what's going to happen. And then the later ones, you're like, oh, cool. We're with them again. Whatever. Yeah. Often the first story is the origin story, which is really compelling. But in my memory, the later ones are better because the individual characters like get even more themselves. Hmm. They get kind of zanier and they get more. It gets it just gets more them. Versus now, it's like the first one, they're kind of figuring it out. Yeah. It's like when you watch a TV show. Sure. I kind of think of Police Academy like a TV show. Yeah. When you watch the first couple episodes of a season of a show, you're kind of like, they're trying to figure out what the voice of the actors are, like yeah. the characters are and stuff. Kind of felt like that to me. Huh. So now, structurally, I don't know. I could rewatch them as an adult and be like, oh, obviously the first one was the best. But from my like kid brain, just seeing that's what I remember from my kid brain. Hmm. Yeah. Um, did your mom like these? She loved comedies. Was this one? I think this wasn't my dad one again. Yeah. Yeah. My dad tended to be the one who would watch more movies with me. Yeah. TV was my mom. My mom and I watched like sitcoms and stuff like that. I was thinking of Grumpy Old Men. Oh, yeah. That was one. That was I an exception. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if she watched this one. This one may not have been her flavor of comedy. Okay. Yeah. So um, one of my favorite things <clears throat> about the characters in this one was... Steve Gutenberg, he uh, related Mahoney to Bugs Bunny, which I think is <laughs> yes. just like the perfect example. It, it really fits. It really fits. Like he does a lot of like takes where he looks at the camera breaking the fourth wall. He does. Which Bugs Bunny always did. He talked mm-hmm. to the camera. And just like his seriousness, his goofiness, but his, you know, liking doing things for the greater good, but also being a little selfish. Like it really fit. It's. It's really crazy. I don't know if I've ever seen a character on film where I where I saw a closer correlation between Bugs Bunny and a char- like a human character. <laughs> Obviously, Bug- Bugs Bunny doesn't count. I'm just trying to <clears throat> like I'm stumbling on yeah. Bugs Bunny working for the greater good. And he also he as describing himself as Bugs Bunny, he said, mm-hmm. who looks for the good in other people. Did, did, yeah. did, the, I mean, did Bugs Bunny do that? You know, Bugs Bunny. He was I didn't a, see a lot well, of it. Well, it depends on what era of Bugs Bunny. We could devolve here. Like the early Bugs Bunny, like Warner Brothers, he's just a, a chaos agent. Mm. He just likes <laughs> things being chaotic, you know? But then he kind of evolved into being a bit more like, there's a bad guy, I'll take him out. And it'll be fun. Like that was kind of his, his shtick. Okay. Well, that is Gutenberg. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I think it tracks. I think it tracks. Okay. What about you? What were some uh, memorable things or, or characters you liked or that surprised you? Um, I loved the character of Hightower. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, and my one of my favorite parts, I'm jumping ahead to mm-hmm. when you asked me, but one of That's my fine. favorite parts is uh, Leslie. He's like the chubby yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, um, during the riot, he kicks butt and he like yeah. it's the bullies who like who trashed his photo booth he yeah like runs he was across in this, them he was in this photo booth in the beginning that yes. i want i hope that still exists somewhere it's a like a giant yeah. camera it's, it's the, super cool it's the saddest part of the movie for me because it is such a cute awesome looking booth and then they just <laughs> throw it in a river they throw it in the river so tragic. and then he threatens them he's like i'll get you when i'm a police officer yeah. blah 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 and then he does yeah. he sees these guys carrying furniture yes. during the riot. Yeah. And then he puts his gun away and he takes out his like baton. The baton yeah. mm-hmm. and just kicks their butt. It's awesome. Yeah. I think I cheered at the end of that little sequence. You remember the end of the sequence though, right? Yeah. And they were like, uh that was our furniture we were moving. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't lessen it for me though. Oh, you know? I was true. still proud that's of true. Leslie. They got their comeuppance. That's right. <laughs> well how does this relate to Hightower? Oh, I was just switching to, I was saying some things that I liked. Oh, got it, got it. Um, Yeah, Hightower was awesome. 
you know, he tested Bubba Smith, like is the actor who played Hightower. Mm-hmm. He tested so well, like when they did screenings, you know, they do the testing to see the audience, how they respond to certain things. And he tested so well that he got second billing under Steve Gutenberg because the audiences liked him so much. Is he, mm. was he a football player? Was that his? That was one of them. I have two facts from this movie. That is one of the facts. He was a professional NFL football player. He oh. served on the Baltimore Colts, the Oakland Raiders, and the Houston Oilers. Yeah. Didn't recognize any of those teams, but that's great. <laughs> Oakland Raiders? Really? Oh, wait. They're the Las Vegas Raiders now, I think. I think they moved. They kept moving a lot. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Real, you've never heard of the Raiders? I've heard of the Raiders. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was going to say, wow. I was focusing more on the, the names of the places they were from. Gotcha. Um, you've never heard of Baltimore before? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Where's where's that? Is that in the United States? Yes, there's oh. a lot of Balt there, more than in other places. <laughs> I don't know what to say except, wow. Was... Uh, I'm bringing out my horrible jokes in honor of this movie. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Do you want to hear fact number two? Yes, I do. Steve Gutenberg. Do you know Gutenberg's printing press? Gutenberg. <laughs> yes. I want to say that every time I, know, I see his name. I know. I know. Yep. The printing press, uh, the invention that, you know, revolutionized the distribution of knowledge in human history, right? I'm really thankful for that invention in particular. Yeah. yeah. He is not related to that guy <laughs> at all. Poor Steve. I know. But he likes to joke that he is. <laughs> of like, course. Literally, if you Google, like, is he related to the Gutenberg printing press? You'll find answers of like, he likes to say he is that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now I'll know what to watch for. Mm-hmm. I won't. Buy it. Yeah. Uh, Anything. This was a very, very structurally like um, scenery. Everything about it. This is a very 80s movie. Yeah. Any thoughts on that or anything that stood out to you? Um, Well, we were wondering where it was filmed and turns out it was mostly Canada, I think. (laughs) And because the city they were Mm. in, especially during the riot, you really got the sense of it being... I don't know, rough and tumble Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of old school in a way that there's like um, fruit vendors and vegetable vendors with their stalls on the sidewalk. Like that's something that you see um, on Sesame Street, but not Mm -hmm. in real life. Do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And the other thing is like where they filmed it, that didn't really stand out to me, but I did learn that it was, um, and this was words that they use in the 80s. Sure. The building they filmed it in was a, quote, lunatic asylum. And that then, is, yes, that's what they used to call asylum. They didn't yes. even say asylums anymore, right? but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And later it was like a psych- psychiatric hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where they filmed it. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> that's where they were filming all the scenes. Yeah. The like the dorms. classrooms and the dorms oh, and all that. That's, 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 that's hilarious and uh, very kind of disturbingly ironic maybe because hmm. they were kind of the crazy people being in the police academy you know so oh, it's well, a bit there meta you go. i did f- have this fleeting thought of the commandant the commandant. And his office is, his office was very nice it was like a corner office with like lots of windows yeah yeah totally. where he kept his goldfish um <laughs> Yeah, what, there was some stupid gag about the goldfish too like it wasn't even his goldfish or something like that it was ridiculous well later he was feeding it and it was obviously dead yeah 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 he's he reminds me of if inspector clouseau like <laughs> got old enough where he needed to retire you know the mm, big panther mm-hmm. then he would be commandant lassard like that's <laughs> what he would be i kind of get that have you you're giving me a look. Have you seen the Pink Panther before? Um, no, I was wondering, did I pronounce Commandant wrong? Commandant? Commandant. Oh, no. Is it's, it Commandant? I know they weren't it saying is. it like that. <laughs> That's how it's spelled. Commandant. Okay. That's how I've always said it. Cool. And I've seen all seven movies, so <laughs> I don't want to brag. I will defer to your expertise. Yes, but no, you didn't answer my question. Um, Shine a police light Have on I you. seen the Pink Panther? Are you asking me? Is that me, what we're talking about? Me? Yes. I don't think I have. Okay. Right. I learned the piano music. Does that count? <laughs> what does it sound like? I need proof. <laughs> da, 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 da. You, you got da, da. it. You got it. You got it. Diddy, 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 diddy. Okay. What was the most unrealistic thing about this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it started with the first opening paragraph, except I love the opening. Yeah, yeah, uh, the opening is funny. The um, 
I said that it was an unrealistic premise, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the the whole idea for this movie came to the was it director? Uh, he was one of the producers. He was Mads working on Lansky. the right stuff, I think, at the time or something. Right, yeah. right. So he was working on that, and he was um, in L.A. or San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. And mm-hmm. a whole bunch of, like, a, a, a bus pulled up, and they were using the police academy rec- trainers, mm-hmm. trainees, mm-hmm. to do crowd control. And he saw just, like, a whole, like, range of body sizes men women um yeah. all different just all different types of people mm-hmm. who were police academy trainees and he was like huh and then he spoke to what their leader yeah and their their leader kind of said in this cheeky way like yeah we accept we have to accept them all we have to mm-hmm. um but that doesn't mean we can't flunk them out in a couple weeks yeah and so he came home with that idea so actually it's not unrealistic i know actually happened i know it's kind of crazy right it is yeah well i mean it's a it's a good litmus test you know you you get anybody who's interested and then see if they're a fit for the job that's kind of that's a good way to roll have you ever thought about being in law enforcement um i think i actually did one time (laughs) think about it for like a minute yeah and then it was done (laughs) Was it after watching one of these movies? Well, when I was a kid, yeah, absolutely. I was like, if I can do the noise sound effects and stuff, then that's my job. That's a great job. <laughs> but um, I think it was more a logistics thing where you're like, oh, I'm in between jobs. What career path do I take? Do I want to be in the state police? No. So that's about how long it lasts. How about you? No. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm, I'm not of the disposition to be good at it. Although I can sit in a car for a long time oh, well. and eat horrible food. I'm good at those things. <laughs> and I'm really good at noticing details. So um. I I wouldn't mind being like a bailiff in Judge Judy's courtroom, <laughs> which is what Amazon was trying to force us to watch after we watched this <laughs> That's movie. That's true. It's the fastest. It was like one and a half seconds until it started. Yeah. And the end of this movie has preview, like has like stuff that goes on afterwards. Yeah, you have to watch during the credits because yeah. it's the whole like presentation. That's the graduation. Yes, I want to see the graduation. I want those memories. I didn't pay to have my kid go to school for fourteen years and not get a picture of them with that diploma. Fourteen weeks. Oh, right, fourteen yeah. weeks. <laughs> Pretty sure someone said years at one point in a movie. In the yeah. Movie. Wow. So, um. What was your, um, like, what were the parts that made you wonder why they took that, made that choice in the film? Hmm. Also, while you think about that, I want to comment on um, one of the characters. (laughs) She was, uh, I like doing this, giving you a very difficult question that you have to noodle through. And then just, you know, moving on with other things. So Laverne Hooks, she Mm -hmm. was the very quiet, meek Mm -hmm. police officer. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens before she auditioned for the part. The night before. The night before. She was in Little Shop of Horrors stage production. And Michael Jackson had seen her. And he came up after the show and he was like, oh, I loved you. It was so great. It was so great. And he was like doing his Michael Jackson whisper voice. Yeah. And then he kissed her on the cheek. So then... That was right before she auditioned. And so she just went into the audition and did the Michael Jackson whisper voice. And she totally got a call back. So <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's beautiful how people, and we heard other stories of the actors going into their casting call, mm-hmm. um, of just using their everyday observances. I think that's really cool yeah. to let something, I mean, it's not small that she met Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. but to observe it and like roll that into yeah. her next day the way she did that was really cool well, that's one of the uh i mean it's it's a lot like when you try to i mean it is getting a job it, but it's more frequent than mo- normally people interview it's like there's a skill to interviewing you know and doing casting calls is kind of like that too i think where you really got to read like what's going on in order to get noticed amongst you know hundreds of people potentially sometimes thousands like Kyle McLaughlin had to do for doing, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, her character was fun too. Um, and what other character did I, did I like? Well, you liked Hightower. You're trying yeah. to not answer my question, by the way. I could tell. Were there any parts where you were like, oh, I wish they would have done that bit better or anything like that? 
Um, I guess the only thing I would say is like maybe at the end, I was kind of looking for a maybe a change in, of heart in Gutenberg mm-hmm. where he was like, man, I'll make a great cop because I know because I've been on the other side and I know like all the, I don't know, the snarkiness. I can counteract snarkiness because I have mm. the snark in me. Sure. Um, so I kind of was looking for a little bit like mm. that, but also that may have rang false as well because mm. mm-hmm. he's an adult and <laughs> he's <laughs> kind of like, he was like a kid in an adult suit. So that's true. It would have felt it would have felt a little. It may not have landed quite right. Yeah, and they had the shtick to bring back with the last joke of the film too. So, yeah. Um, what did you, oh, Kim Cattrall? She's in this movie. You know who that is, right? We briefly talked about this during the movie, but um, you, who is she in the movie again? She was Gutenberg's love interest. Oh, okay. She was like the upper class. She just wanted to do something different. Yeah. Character. And where did she? Wait, how do I know her again? That's what I'm trying to see. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what she was in before? Yeah. I mean, arguably her most famous role is in Sex and the City. She's a character called. Which I never watched that. Yeah. Um. But I can kind of see, mm-hmm. I can recognize her. Um, I don't remember what else I've seen her in. Sorry. Uh, I, no, I mean, she she was not in a lot of, like, she was one of those, like, you'd see her sprinkled throughout movies in, like, the 80s and mm-hmm. sometimes lower budget and et cetera. And then it was, like, radar side, like, it was just quiet on the pop culture radar. And then Sex and the City happened and then she kind of had a renaissance. Hmm. So Good for her. Yeah. I didn't want to not talk about her because I honestly don't remember because I didn't really care about the love interests when I saw this as a kid. Uh, I didn't remember if she's in the next movies even. I don't even remember. Wow. Yeah. I can tell you Hightower's in the next one though. Oh, yay. I, her character seemed to be like the least developed. They didn't spend a lot of time yeah. on her story. I would agree. But there were like, I mean, it was a big cast. So yeah, that that makes sense. The okay, what was the longest joke they did in the, in in the movie? I have one in my mind. There was one joke they did. They wrote an entire character around one joke. Oh, what what was it? It was the George Martin character, <laughs> and he was like this like Spanish ladies man. Yeah, and they that like the second you see him, he has like a car full of women, and he's like they're all my girlfriends, and he's just a ladies the ladies man. And the entire character is built around the joke of his name is actually just George Martin. And he just knew that if he talked that way, that he would get ladies. Yeah. Whole movie. One joke. His whole character. Yeah, but. He didn't do much He's else. like, no, he didn't. That's it. Yes. Everything about him, like plot point wise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm realizing now, like, he is a big part of the movie, but it's just his personality. Yes. So totally worth it to put him in for one joke. Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't do anything else. I mean, yeah. he's in the riot, as you said, but... He is, but he's getting another girlfriend during the riot. That's true. He's carrying a TV, which was probably <laughs> stolen for Yes, her. exactly. The riot is really interesting. It, it is. Um, To me, that's like... Hmm, it kind of has the feeling of like Muppets. Really? Yeah, where they're okay. like, you know, people just start fighting and mm-hmm. then... They start looting, yeah. and then they just start chasing police. That was kind yeah. of the escalation. Um, and so at that part where everyone just kind of bands together with their weapons mm-hmm. <laughs> to just run down the street and chase police, yeah, that feels very much like just a, a sense of like it's just this inflamed. It the movie had a huge tonal shift. I think when mm-hmm. that happened, mm-hmm. like everything was kind of zany up until that point. And then it just hits the brakes and then becomes, oh, wait, this is kind of almost a different movie a bit. No, actually, I think it was very zany and oh, bizarre yeah? that people were suddenly like just running down the streets with weapons. That's what I mean. It just reminds me of the Muppets because it's just okay. this, like over the top reaction. Right. That's just a really kind of silly yeah. like, hmm, how did that happen? But it's just silly and the whole right. thing was silly. So it you roll with it. I, let me I agree with you. It did. And I think they did it accelerated in order to make the plot work you know what i mean mm-hmm. but the seriousness mean is like it like went into the life and death that's kind of what i was talking about okay. whereas everything was kind of like light 
And then all of a sudden it became life and death situation. That's what I meant totally. So also unrealistically, Hightower goes right back to his florist job. Like <laughs> I know. Didn't he close the shop? Like what how's that? I think it was a family <laughs> business. And I'm basing that off of hearing like his one line of exposition. I think it, <laughs> it was like a third generation florist. So maybe his dad was running the shop nice. for a while. <laughs> And then he, he, yeah, I think that's probably what happened. I definitely, like, I respect the law enforcement, but mm-hmm. if I had a choice to do law enforcement or run a florist, <laughs> I would pick the florist. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's probably true. You love you love gardening and flowers, so, yeah. Uh, what do you think you would, do you think you would be able to make it through a police academy? If you had to like actually go to police academy, what um, would you wash out? I don't know. I'm kind of like when I say I'm going to do something, I, I do it. Yeah. And I will try my hardest. Even if I don't graduate on top of my class, I will I will get there and I will do it. Okay. So I want to think I would go for it. Okay. I mean, I saw they did zip lining. That's fun. Yeah. Zip- I could do zip lining. <laughs> <laughs> I think the hardest thing I saw on their course is the brick wall. Like there was a brick wall and there was no, was there even a rope? No. I don't think there was a rope. You just have to grab the top. (laughs) How do you even do that? Yeah. That's probably the hardest thing I saw them do. Well, that's why Hightower smartly pushed it over. Pushed it over. Yeah. That's great. That's a good one. Um, What, if any messages, do you think were in this film? Um, Don't take yourself too seriously. (laughs) Actually, I really like the part where like, um, Hightower stands up for the woman who talks really soft. Yes. That, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, Laverne. One yeah. of, she runs over this guy's foot. And yeah. He says something really racist and yeah. ugly. Yeah. And then Hightower just comes down and just turns the car over. Yes. <laughs> Flips the car. That was, that's a great scene. That was awesome. Yeah. Wait, what was the question? What was the message? <laughs> yeah. Um, do the right thing, even if it, that was what he did. He did the right thing, even if it meant that he was let go and flunked from the course. Yeah. Bubba Smith was really like, I think he was really proud of that scene too. Mm-hmm. Like he said he was a film buff and he'd never seen uh, on film like a, a black act, like a black man defending a black woman like that. Like at, the at his own his expense. Job. At his own expense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. All right. Well, are you going to ask what? Well, what's what are some of your favorite gags or jokes from the movie? Oh, my goodness. The fact that the bumbling guy, like the way they establish his bumblingness uh, with his wife chasing him through (laughs) like the yards. It made me wonder if Shaun of the Dead is inspired by Police Academy. I'd never thought about it before. It it felt very much like Shaun of the Dead when the when the woman is like leaping over fences and yeah. swimming through the pool and then they're on the highway and she's still holding onto the car. Yeah. That Al- was funny. Although that's also a gag they did in Ferris Bueller's Day Off too, which I, I can't get my years. I think this is before Ferris Bueller's Day Off, if I remember right. Um, so that, I really liked that gag. His gag later of him, he was handed, his partner hands him an apple and he goes, I don't want this. And he throws it out the window and it hits someone who turns around and sees someone else holding an apple and that starts the riot. Yeah. That's also a great gag. <laughs> and Tackleberry's gun. Like he's got this crazy huge gun that just blows up the the uh target practice thing. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's yeah. That's my kid gag right I, there. I think the one that made us laugh the loudest mm-hmm. was two parts. The first part was like the two officers, they were supposed to find out where this party was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> they were told the wrong place. And yes, it was, yes. It was a bar that maybe they wouldn't have chosen to no, go into. No, Freddie Mercury probably would have been there. No. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't their type of bar. No, it was not. And they ended up spending the whole night there. Yes, they did. And maybe... They learned something about themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was called the Blue Oyster. That that song was amazing. Like, it's such a great song. And it's su- it just sticks in your mind. It's really good. And then later, during the riot, they're looking for a a place to hide out. Yeah. And they go in and they don't realize it's the Blue Oyster Bar. <laughs> that's the callback. And yeah. they yeah, they play the song and that's you and I just laughed super loud. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, that was a good day. Well, speaking of exiting at the right time in the right place. All right, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Tell us what you think of this film in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. 